Thank you, Gene. begin even before the music starts. Worshiping God isn't reserved for when we sing. Worshiping God is now. Now is the time to worship. So as we prepare this atmosphere, go ahead. There's a song in your heart. Sing that song in your heart. Let it out. Father God, I lift up to you this church. I pray for each one that's in this room, that's in their rooms, in their respective rooms. Lord, I pray a, a prayer of blessing upon them, Lord. And I pray that each heart is ready to receive. Don't leave me hanging. more time. hearts open, our arms open, Lord God. We're ready to receive the rain of blessing that you're going to pour out on us. Lord, I looked out, I stepped out in the sanctuary, lo and behold, oh God, there are clouds in the sky. And so, though other people may see it ominous, Lord God, I praise your name because it illustrates a blessing that's to come, a rain that's supposed to pour down Lord God, on us. And so, Lord, for those who are ready, those who are ready to receive, oh God, you know, we know you won't disappoint, Lord God. We're ready to receive you today, Lord. Hallelujah. Your blessings, your mer mercy, your grace. Lord, we're ready, Lord God. Hallelujah. And I pray again for this service. We love you, oh Lord. We dedicate this time to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, hallelujah. Welcome everyone, how are you? Hallelujah, hallelujah. So if you're still trying to find your seat, go ahead. We invite you to come and we're just going to praise God today, hallelujah. And as I prayed earlier, my, my hope is that everyone's ready to receive something. We didn't just come to church just so that we can fill in the time. You didn't come to church just to get those seats warm for something else. You're here because of God, right? 
Hallelujah. So let's worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. We want to be where you are, God. In your presence, Lord, is where we yearn to be. We want to hear from you. We want to hear from you today, Lord. Speak to us, oh God. Speak to us.
The song says, Lord God, we wait with great anticipation for the promises, Lord God, that you've given us as we hold dear to your word and stand strong in faith, believing that you know our needs. That you know, Lord God, the promises that we hold to and we cling to it, Lord, because we know that you hear. It is your word. Every word that you speak, Lord God, will come to pass. Your promises will come to pass in our lives, Lord God, like a flood. Like a rain, Lord, will come in our lives and to your lives. And may we just receive you, Lord God. Receive. why we're here, Lord God, to hear you, Lord God, speak. We're here, Lord God, so that we can just sit at your footstool and listen to your word as you instruct us, encourage us, comfort us, Lord, and prophesy words of encouragement. Let everyone who have come with pain and discouragement, you are in the right place. God has spoken. as we continue with our worship of you, may we continue to worship with our giving, our tithes and our offering. What's not yours? May we give with a cheerful heart, believing, Lord, that this is your will. And we, we, we walk by faith. We pray, God, that you just bless these tithes and offerings, Lord. 
for your purpose, for your glory. Teach us, Lord, to be good stewards of what you provide for us. Lord, that this money and the gifts, Lord God, is for your purpose, for your kingdom. Again, touch every heart, Lord God, who walks by faith and gives. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you that you are our provider. And Father, we pray for the message this morning as we uh, listen. Lord, speak through me, not my words, but your words be done, Lord. Your words. And Jesus, that you will speak in the context of everyone's situation, whatever they're going through, that they will hear you and be blessed. We are so careful that we bow all the glory, praises, and thanksgiving to you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may all sit down. Why don't you greet the person beside you? God's good. God is good. Hallelujah. You know, someone next to you may need to hear that, especially if they are going through some very difficult times and they're just not seeing it. They're very good in pretending that they're okay, but How God says that through you can minister to that person. Don't just say God's good, but really intend to say with all your heart, God is good. Okay, because uh, that message can really do, can bring so much encouragement to someone who is so, so hungry for God, someone who is so lost or someone that's depressed or fearful, they need to hear that from someone else. They can keep saying God is good, God is good, but sometimes it's so different when you hear it from someone saying it to you, God is so good, brother. God is so good. So we need that reminder. Amen? Amen. What you heard a while ago, for especially those um, on live stream who may if you are here, you, you may have heard someone speak in tongues. And in this church, we believe that it continues to this day. In the Bible, it says so. And um, I don't want to go uh, teach that right now. But there will come a time I'd like to teach it so that everyone will be comfortable that someone spoke in tongues and God will have to interpret so that people will understand that heavenly language. And again, that person who spoken tongues can also be used in the gift of interpretation okay because they're already flowing in the obedience of god so if no one interprets that same person who spoke in tongues the gift of tongues will also experience the gift of interpretation and the interpretation was god is here to encourage us and if there's someone who came here today with that need for comfort that God is talking to you right now. He is your comforter. Amen? And all these gifts is to edify the body of Christ, to bless, to build up, to encourage, to comfort the body of Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. And there could be two or three interpretations in tongues. decision of the Holy Spirit, how he will manifest his presence. Okay. Okay, today I'm going to talk to you about God working for our good. Okay, God works for the good. God works for the good. In Romans 8, if you've read Romans 8, it's a very, very instructive letter uh, of Paul. The Romans. In Romans 8, here Paul contrasts, if you read the book of Romans, chapter 8, he contrasts a life lived 
in the world or selfish pursuits be contrasted to a life of living according to God. Life living according to the flesh or the world and a life living according to God or in the spirit. And Paul in the book of Romans, uh, particularly chapter 8, impresses to those who read that God is all-knowing, God is all-wise and all-powerful. And when you go deeper in your Christian walk, you will realize how powerful that is, what I just said. God is all-knowing, God is all-powerful, God is all-wise, ever-present. Amen? And... Uh, that's just how it is. When you go deeper in the Lord, this, this phrase becomes your strength. You know, when Christians utter the phrase, um, all things work together for good. You hear that, okay? Romans 8, verse 28. Can you see that? Romans 8, verse 28. Okay. It says there, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. You know, um, this verse is probably one of the most quoted verse for Christians. It's one of the most powerful, most encouraging. It is uh, it's a very popular verse, all right? And many who go through very difficult times, they memorize this verse. Romans 8, verse uh, 28. And we know that in all things, God works. And that all things includes everything that you're going through at the moment. God works for the good of those who love him. Okay? That's the condition of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. And in King James... I want to show you that too. Here, now, what I read a while ago was NIV. Here in the King James Version, it's the same thing, but um, just a little different. And we know that all things, a while ago it says, in, and we know that um, in all things, God works for the good. But here in King James Version, it says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. This morning, I just want to talk to you specifically about this verse, Romans 8, verse 28. Because if you're going to quote this verse, and I, I, I encourage you to memorize this verse, because after I go through and just briefly explain this, Romans 8, 28, then you'll understand why this verse is powerful, but that we need to understand it in the way it was meant to be understood because some people when they quote this verse they kind of miss a little miss the point okay i want to clarify that right now so that when we quote this verse we know what it really means and when we know what how it how it's interpreted then we'll be able to really see the power of this verse romans 8 verse 28 Amen? All right. This is a promise. The promise that God works all things for the good. Okay. But, here's the but. But it does not mean that all things, okay, all things are good. Some say all things work to, for the good. And they kind of miss the point that even when you're going through suffering, even when you're doing evil, it's good. No. No. Okay, it does not mean that all things are good because you know that there are many things that are not good. Some there are many events that are not good. COVID nineteen is not good. Getting sick with COVID nineteen is not good. Getting cancer is not good. Getting a divorce is not good. Losing your job is not good in a sense. Evil is prevalent in this fallen world. Okay, so we have to identify that there are good things but, and there are bad things. But here, we know here that God is 
able to turn bad things. God is able to turn any circumstance you're going through for your good, for our good, in the long-range plan of God. It could be instant that He'll change the circumstance or something good, or that He will gradually change your circumstance that in the end, it will come out good. Even when you see how bleak and hopeless and petrifying it is where you are right now, in the end, it will turn out good if you love God and are called according to His purpose. He sees the bigger picture like the great grandmaster of chess. He sees the big picture and He is a master plan. He is like a great chess, grand chess player multiplied a million times. Because he knows all things. He has all power. And he is all wise. Amen. Another is this. In addition, this promise. So a while ago I emphasized that this promise is not saying that all things are good. No. But also it, this, this, this verse does not emphasize that whatever we ask we will acquire all things will work together for good. That means to say, I'm going to, uh, whatever I ask, I'm just going to keep asking and I will receive it. Some use this verse in some way to believe that whatever they ask, they're going to get it. It's just a matter of time. But we will see here in this verse that we, that God is good and that we have confidence that His plan in our lives will work. Uh, that He will see that His plans in our lives will happen so long as we continue to love Him and we walk according to His purpose. Then His plans for our lives. And say, man, but pastor, His plan seems so ugly. I am hurting. Is this God's plan? He wants me to suffer Wait, wait, because then God will begin to bring out why these things happen. And then you will see later on and you will start appreciating and worshiping God that there was something that came out so good from this situation. And probably the greatest thing that would come out in a situation in your life is when someone comes to know God because of your circumstance. You're probably, the good thing you're expecting is, oh, I'm going to be healed of this. You know, healing is good if that's what you're praying for. But if someone comes to know Christ, someone be becomes saved, someone receives Christ because of your sickness, that is a greater greater joy and treasure because that sickness may be with you it may be the instrument by which you will leave this earth and be with the Lord but if you do it right many many will come to know God because of you and someday when they go to heaven they're going to thank you forever and ever and ever for how your great the, the, the light that you have shown has caused them to receive Christ and now they can rejoice heaven they can rejoice uh, being with God forever and ever and that is a greater treasure than receiving your healing on earth Amen Praise the Lord that's number one. This promise is true, but it's not that all things are good. No, not all things are good. And that whatever you ask for, you're going to get it. No, not everything you ask for. And whatever God answers at the end of your prayer is way better than what we thought is the best answer. Second is this. God works for the good. That's outline two. God works for the good. Since his plan is always good. Can you tell that to your brother and sister? God's plan is always good. Michelle, God's plan is always good. 
Oh, there's two Michelles right there. <laughs> Michelle, the, you know, you know. Two Michelles, right? All right, let's move on, Pastor. Let's move on. Christians can take confidence that no matter how circumstances, no matter what circumstances we're going through, God is actively involved and will align our circumstance to His plan. Our circumstances may be caused by our wrongdoing, our wrong decision. Our circumstances may be caused by this DUI. Now I am, I am in this wheelchair for how long? And, and, and with their circumstances may be not be caused by you. It may be caused by you. But the thing is that if you stick close to God, God's going to turn around that circumstance and align it with His will so that the devil will not laugh at the end. That God will say, I am in control of this situation. Okay. With this knowledge that God can align things, we can now be content in our situation because God has, is aligning our circumstances to that which it will give glory to him and blessing in our lives. Philippians chapter 4 verse 11 says this. In the NIV, I am not saying this because I am in need. For I have learned to become content whatever the circumstance. I have learned to be content. Okay, I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to worry. I'm not going to whine. I'm not going to doubt God. I will be content in my circumstance because I know God is in control of this circumstance. And as long as I stick close to God, His design, His alignment, His alignment is going to come to pass. Amen? So be content where you are because that's probably where people are watching you and, and really observing you and really seeing. Let's see if he's going to act like me if I was in that situation. Let me see if he's going to act human. When he say act human, he's going to act like a worldly person. He's going to do this and all that. Let's see what he's going to do. But if you're so content in God... In the midst of your circumstance, watch how you will, your light will shine. You will become a beacon of hope. That contentment becomes a beacon of hope for others who would find themselves depressed in, in that situation. Amen. The fact that God works all things together for good. Okay, here. The fact that God works together all things... For good means that God's plans will not be thwarted. Okay? The fact that God's work, all things together for good, means that His plans will not be thwarted. In fact, we are part of His plan. Having been called according to His purpose, that this what in this circumstance that I'm in right now, that the devil put me into, or whatever, in the bigger picture, God is going to, God has planned out that no matter what my circumstance is, He will plan out that in the bigger picture, I will be used to touch others. To bless others, to encourage others because I'm in this situation. Uh, did you get it? Because I am sick right now, in the bigger picture, my sickness will cause me to be able to reach out to those that are sick, similar to my type of sickness. 
or I will be able to really now sympathize with those who have that sickness like me. Or that in my sickness, someone who is sick like me would see my joy in this sickness and they will come to know God because I have full peace and rest in the midst of my... When you think that God, where is your plan here? In the bigger picture, you are in this bigger plan where people are watching you in your situation. Amen? Praise God. When we trust God and His ways, we can be sure that He is active and powerful in our behalf. When we are, when we are, in his presence and we're moving according to his will then we can be rest assured that his power is moving in such a powerful way that we don't see it but god is dealing is multitasking okay in ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 it says this now to him who is able to, to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is work within us. See that? Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is working within us. That is work within us. His power is immeasurable. It's working within, within us. And when we are walking according to his purpose, you may not see it, but the demonic realm is already just really uh, being steered by what's happening through you. You may be just dealing with your situation, but the devil is already like, why did we even throw this suffering in this guy's life? Now he's becoming a light and a beacon of hope in his workplace, amongst his friends, we, we did not choose wisely. This guy is strong in the Lord. You know, that's how the devil would think. God knows the future. And he desires, and his desire is that to accomplish what he has planned for us. Look in Isaiah 46, verse 10. Okay. God knows the future, and he desires will be accomplished. His desires will be accomplished. Isaiah 46 verse 10 says, I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, what is still to come. I say, my purpose, my purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. Amen? If God has a plan for us, He has a purpose, it will stand. It will be accomplished so long as, again, so long as if you continue to love God and walk close to the Lord, His purpose will stand. God, I say, you might say, man, Lord, this hurts. I'm, what you, I, I'm in pain. When, can, when will you stop this? I, I'm, I'm, I, Lord, help me out. We may not know that what we're about, what we're doing right now, right now, is accomplishing such a great task that if we continue, the only way we can get out of it with so much joy is if we remain in love and faithful and remain and we remain close to God. That's the only way out of this situation with victory. If you want to escape the situation, you want to go this way, you don't want to listen to God, you want to go with your friends, you want to go to, you want to do this, you, you drink alcohol, whatever it is. Yeah, that's a way out. But man, it, you might just prolong the situation. You might kill yourself. You might cause a stumbling block to many who've been hoping that you'd get free, that you'd overcome this. The thing is, if you want to get out of your situation, get more in love with God. If you want to get out of your situation and really and, and cause people to know God, then stay even closer to the Lord so that His plan will be accomplished in your life. Amen? 
So even when things seem so chaotic, without control, God is still in charge. Tell that your neighbor, man. God is in charge. Okay. God is in charge. We sometimes worry about what's happening in our lives. Why? Because we don't know what tomorrow is. We are so limited. We can't pass beyond two pawns in a chess, in a chess match. There, you just can't see ten, time, ten, ten moves in advance. You don't know the mind of the person that you're fighting. You don't know. You're so limited. That's why you need to step by faith, trust in God, and don't think about what tomorrow will bring because God is in control of God. God knows everything that in your life, in our life. So don't push it. Rather, stay close to the Lord and walk by faith. He knows the moves. You just listen and obey when it says step forward. Make two steps. Or be still. Okay. So let's go to the third one. Joseph and Paul. Joseph and Paul, the principle of God's work, uh, the principle of God works all things together for good is illustrated in these two people. There's so many characters in the Bible, but I've just chosen two right now. One is Joseph, and I kind of read my notes here to kind of quicken my, this, this sermon. You know, early in Joseph's life, you know Joseph, right, in the Old Testament. Joseph's jealous brother sold him into slavery, okay? In Egypt, Joseph rose to a position and authority in Potiphar's house. But unfortunately, he was taken away. He was imprisoned and forgotten by his friends. So again, another setback. He was doing well, but now setback. And he, he was now in prison. God's gift, though, he, he, he gifted him the ability to, to interpret dreams. And through that ability, again, Joseph again rose uh, from his situation and, become, and became uh, and, and took a place of honor and position at the, at the right hand of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the Pharaoh. So again, praise the Lord. But then after that, when drought came, Joseph's brother was Joseph's brother who sold him out, uh, went to Egypt seeking for food. And they encountered Joseph, who eventually, Joseph eventually saved his brother, his father. He saved them and gave them a new life in Egypt. Okay? So here throughout the life of Joseph, he continued to trust God no matter the setbacks, the circumstances. Joseph experienced so, so much bad stuff. He, he, he was kidnapped. Uh, he, he, he was sold into slavery. He was falsely accused. He, was, he had a wrongful imprisonment. He was rejected. He, he went through famine. But in the end, God brought him wonderful things. And this life-affirming conclusion of, of Joseph was that he remained faithful. He maintained his walk with God. He continued to worship God. Even when he was a slave, when he was put into prison, and all of this, he was falsely accused. He remained faithful. And look what happened. He became the second strongest man in, the king, in, in Egypt. And I said, man, God's not listening to me. Where is God in this? He's not in control. Where is it? Where are you, Lord? But he remained faithful. And because of this, he not only saved his family, but he even brought Israel into Egypt and saved Israel through this famine. No matter where you are right now, if you stay close to God and remain faithful to the Lord. Watch how you will have a life changing conclusion in your life that in the end you say, God, thank you. You will come out more blessed than you were if you stay close to God. Another one here is Paul. Paul's life is another uh, testament of how God's work uh, it, God's work all things together for good. Paul here suffered shipwrecks 
okay? He, he was beaten multiple times. He was imprisoned so many times. There were many murder attempts on Paul. And he had temporary blindness. Yet, all within God's plan to spread the gospel in Asia. Acts 9 verse 16 says this, I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Wow, that was already prophesied. I'm going to show Paul how much he must suffer for my name. But because of this, he wrote all, mostly all the books of the New Testament. Okay. Now, is, is 1 Corinthians 11 verse 24 to... Oh man, that's long. I'm going to read that fast, all right? Look at this. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been constantly on the move. I have been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false believers. I have labored and toiled and I have often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and I have often gone without food i have been cold and naked have you suffered like him yet he continued to believe and trust god through it all god was steadfast working in paul's life in spite of the setbacks in the scary things he went through those who love god can trust his goodness Yes, there is goodness in what happened to Paul because his power, God's power was made perfect and revealed in the weakness of Paul. Through God, through Paul's weakness, people saw that God sustained him. That we journey, that Paul journeyed with God. That's the key. Amen? Amen. So, again, Joseph, look at Joseph, look at Paul. Compare your life. If they can continue this, not leave God, then do the same thing. Next uh, outline is this. Who have been called? Who are the called? Okay. Okay. Who are the called? Those who are called are the ones. Because what was, what was the scripture again? Okay. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. So who are those called? Those are the ones whom the Holy Spirit was able to convince and enable that person to come and receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You know, if you don't receive Christ, the, everyone will come to a point where they will have to make a choice. The Holy Spirit has done its work. They try, the Holy Spirit tried to convince you to receive Christ. Let go of the world. Let go of your vices. Let go of your ambitions. Trust in God. But in the end, you will, we will be judged if we have surrendered to God. If we surrendered to the Lord, then you are the called person. You are called when you have received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That means to say that you have now a God focus in your life, not a self focus. That means to say that you will now trust God with all your heart. And not only when you have problems, that you will be so secured and stable in the Lord and not your world resources, not your job, that you're secured if you have a good family. You're secured if you got a good home. You're secured if you have a good job. You're secured in the... No, no. Your security is in the Lord even if you're losing your job. Your security is in the Lord even if you're losing your health. Your security is in the Lord. And those who are called will live out that type of security. And not the, you know, Dito, when, when it's good, I'm with God. When it's bad, I'm in the world. When it's good, I'm with God. No, no, no. You go all out. Good or bad. 
That is the person that is called. That he is called because now his life, his, his home is in heaven. That means to say that he's always thinking about heaven. He's always thinking, I'm not going to be staying here on earth any, anyway. Uh, my, his hope is always about tr the treasures of, of heaven, about God. So that now he's so detached from the earthly world, earthly home. That he's detached from all his bank account. That, you know, whatever you want to, of me, God, I will do. Here, you need this, Lord. Here, Lord. If you, you want to use this for my life, Lord, Lord, whatever it is. Because it's all about you. My sight is eternal things, not this world. That is a called out person. They are now living by faith and not by sight. Lord, do you want me to go here? I will go here. You want me to go here? I'll go here. Lord God, it's scary, but I will go. It's all about God. That is a called out person. The call of God that Paul is reminding here. It's not the call of a pet. Of oh, Where's Blackie? 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 Come here, Blackie. Blackie? And Blackie said, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm going to go if you have a bone. But, you know, I'm going to just play. You know, it's not a call. A call that person is like, according to some theologians, a called out here is one who's like Jesus called out Lazarus. Lazarus, come out. The call contains power to the one who responds to it. That if you say, yes, Lord, and in there, all your vices, all your life as an unbeliever, every pain and suffering, and that you thought that you can never live that way again. That when you say, Lord, here I am, Lord, are you calling me to be a Christian? Yes, Lord. And when you say, yes, Lord, things start to fall off in your life. Your, your past is changed. There is now power in your life. You're walking in the spirit, not in the flesh anymore. You're living about the eternity, not of this world, not the temporal things of this world. You are called out from this world into the marvelous light, the family of God. Can I hear an amen? Amen. 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 Lastly is this. According to his purpose. I think Paul's reason for adding this phrase according to his purpose was to make it perfectly clear that God's call is God's call is about him, his purpose, not your purpose. I'm going to call you up, but you can continue to live your life. You can continue to follow your ambitions. No, no, no. When I'm going to call you is because I have a purpose in your life. You follow my purpose and my plan. For I have a plan for you, says the Lord, not to harm you, to give you, uh, and, and, uh, but to prosper you, to give you hope in the future. But so long as you walk towards me. The call of God is not a response to any purpose that we have. Oh, I will respond to him because my purpose is to go to heaven. My purpose is so that I will be healed. So I will respond to him. No, no, no. I want to respond because I need to have a relationship with the one who created me. I need to know him who is my creator. And I need to fellowship with God Almighty. Here on earth and in heaven. God has a higher and holy purpose that will govern us. We don't have a purpose other than God's purpose when we are called. God is not working to make us happy, but to fulfill His purpose. Can you hear that? God is not calling you to be happy. He's calling you to fulfill His purpose. And what is one major purpose that you know about God in your life? What is one major purpose? That is, what is the Great Commission? Go and make disciples of all nations. Why? Because your life here on earth is temporary. You will live forever in heaven. Now go that many will come to know me and live with me like you. Go and worship me in the midst of the storm. That they will realize that I am real. That I exist. That I am a greater, I am greater than all the storms in your life. Worship me in your circumstance. Let them know that I am your peace.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, God's love is everlasting. You believe that? His wisdom is infinite. So it does not matter who or what attempts to thwart God's plan in our lives. No one or nothing can ever derail God's plan in your life. No matter how much you want to lose loosen that grip because it's just too hard but stay close like that of joseph stay close like that of paul amen because it is about to finish and god will receive the glory and the praise our decision to align with god's will and always trust in him will bring its reward you will be rewarded and if it's not on earth, it's heaven. They say the greater suffering you experience on earth, when you reach heaven, God will multiply the joy because of that suffering you've experienced. God knows how to reciprocate and give back in greater measure what you have lost on earth. What you've denied on earth it's you and God. God's not going to give you, oh, you've suffered much? Here's five talents. Oh, you have suffered greater? Here's ten more. You know, oh, I know who you are. I know what you've been through here in heaven. Receive that. God knows how much of a reward He's going to give you. Amen. Amen. But even just put it, forget about the reward. Just making it to heaven and being with God forever and ever is the greatest joy of all. So think of heaven, not on earth, so that you'll be able to follow Christ here on earth. Think of the temporal things and you will always find yourself disobeying the Holy Spirit. Amen? I think of graduating. I don't think of how many sleepless nights or, the, or how many candles I burn. I'm always thinking I'm going to graduate. I'm going to get that diploma. I'm going to give it to my parents. I'm going to do this. I always think beyond. And then I will just, I, 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 will, I, I, I pass through the difficulties because my goal is beyond. But if I'm always looking at here, here and now, here and now, and not the goal at hand, not the farther, further goal. I'm looking at it. I will always stumble. I will stumble. I will stumble. I will stumble. But if I'm looking there, bam, I stumble. No. Yeah. You get it? Let me give you one experience when I'm a, when I'm a mountain biker. You see that in my Facebook. There's a reason, many reasons, a few reasons why, because I love the people I hang around with. They're all pastors, and we all just, just worship together up in the mountains, whatever. It is. But one thing here is that when you are going fast downhill, fast downhill, when I'm saying fast, it's not the road, you know, asphalt or cement. No, no, no. You're going through some big rocks, rock gardens, boulders, whatever it is. You don't look at the rock. You don't look at the sand or you really fall. But you look forward. You look at the trail you want to go to. And then by looking at that, you, you just let your wheels, your fat wheels go over the rocks, over the sand. Let it just go, roll through it. And you'll feel the bump. You'll feel the slip. But your eyes looking forward. So you're not fearful of what you see. But if you look here, oh my God, look at the big rock. Oh, look at the sand. Oh, oh, oh. And you fall. But if you look forward, um, even if you're even if you're moving and you're about to fall, you're looking forward, so you kind of like, no, nah, I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna get there. You get it? But if you're looking here, oh, oh, oh. Even if you're trying to get away from the rock, you're gonna hit the rock. Why? You're just in trance at looking at the rock. That you you want to get out, but now you're stiff and you're gonna hit the rock because you just focused on it. You want to get out, but you're already like. You can't get out of it. You're so focused on the rock. But if I look beyond the rock, then even if I hit the rock, I go over the rock. Amen? Go 
over your obstacles. Look at God and you overcome your obstacles. Look at Jesus and you're not going to drown. You're not going to look to the left or to the right and see the wind and the storms. Look at Jesus and you will walk above the waters. Boy, I shouldn't be breathing like this. <laughs> Amen, live stream. Where are you? On a personal note, let me just try to go down now. <laughs> And a person, it's like I wrote. Oh my gosh. It's okay, that's okay. On a personal note, God is making things happen for you. Even when you don't see it. Even when you don't feel it. Even when the events and the evidence look so grim. He is working because you are praying. He is working in your life because you are waiting on Him. Our Lord is working in our lives right now you just don't know it but his plans will not be thwarted because you are hanging on and you're not going to let go amen and if death if the finish line comes sooner well amen because you'll be with God but when you reach that finish line, you know that there will be people that will be speaking your name in your memorial service. People will come to know you because now the pastor will say, if this guy lived his life, rise up and follow Jesus Christ. People will come to know him because you finished the race so well that people will want to walk with you, will want to walk that walk. Amen. God works all things together for good. That means your good and His good. Amen. All things means not only God's good, but your good. All things. God will work all things together for good. Both His good and our good. So that when He's glorified, we will receive the benefits. be blessed <laughs> huh. hallelujah Just close your eyes father may we now see the scripture in a whole different light it's all about you well lord god as long as we stay close to you Every circumstance we go through, every situation, every predicament will come out good. Like that of Joseph, Paul, and many others, the heroes of faith. Our lives will stand out because we love you and we maintain your purpose, not ours, but your purpose will be accomplished thank you and father for those who may not know you as lord and savior jesus for those who may not know jesus as lord and savior who have not really surrendered because of whatever reason unbelief or ambition or too much sin you can't be right whatever it is put that aside all you need to do is just simply receive Christ as Lord and Savior. And He'll do the cleansing. He'll do the changing. He'll do, He'll give us the new hope and a new life. If you want Jesus to live in you so that you can overcome, you can change in His power, follow this prayer after me. And say it with all your heart. Dear God. Forgive me of all my sins. I am sorry. Forgive me, Lord. Dear Jesus, thank you for dying on that cross for me. Today, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Rule over me, God, and mold me 
to be like you and to serve you well. I lay before you all my cares, my fears, my decisions, my future, and my family. Thank you, God, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now close your eyes. Put your hand on any part of your body that's sick. If you're depressed, you have fear, put your hand over your head or your heart. It doesn't matter. But now, let us believe that God is going to give people a gift of faith, gift of knowledge, gift of wisdom. People will have wisdom. God, God will give you instruction. Whatever it is that you need, let us now pray. Hallelujah. Father, we pray for that back injury. We speak to it right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for that glaucoma and that cataract right now. In Jesus' name, cataract, glaucoma, leave. Be healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for that hypertension. Lord, rebuke that. We rebuke that hypertension in Jesus' name. And Lord, that cancer, there's no name, no sickness greater than your name, Lord God. So Lord, that cancer... Hallelujah. Rebuke it. Leave in Jesus' name. Leave in Jesus' name from that body. Hallelujah. Whatever is now the need of that body, Lord, the people that are laying their hands on their bodies, the people that are laying at, their hands at home or praying for those loved ones that are far away but are sick, mention that name right now. Hallelujah. God knows that name. God knows the one that you've been praying for. Lord, we pray for that person who needs physical healing. Lord, by your stripes, we proclaim healing and deliverance, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And for that person who needs to be forgiven or who needs to forgive and there is the cause of his sickness, I pray, God, that you will now cause that person to forgive, Lord God, or to apologize, Lord God, that he will be set free, Lord, set free from every curse of the enemy. In Jesus' name, Lord God, break, cause brokenness and humility upon everyone here, Lord, so that your power will flow in their lives. Let there be no pride, oh God, in this place, Lord. Lord, so that your power and your grace will flow, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. For those who are depressed, those who are going through fear, those who are grieving, Lord. Hallelujah. Those, Lord God, who are so confused, whatever it is, Lord, that they're going through mentally or emotionally. We pray right now, Lord, in Jesus, set them free. Set them free, Lord. Fill their hearts now with your love and your and your joy and your peace, Lord God, that the fruit of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit will flow in their lives. Lord, thank you, God. Thank you for setting them free, giving them relief from this fear, whatever fear that is. Lord, that your love, oh God, will cast away fear. That you, Lord God, is their stronghold, their high tower. And they will overcome. Father, I pray that all financial situations be a part bankrupt. Those losing their jobs, Lord, that you secure their jobs. Give them prosperity in Jesus' name. Father, that they may put food on the table. Lord, that their trust is in you. Thank you, God, for securing them, giving them a good job. Lord, providing them a promotion. We're claiming, Lord God, their prayers, Lord, that we hold on to their prayers and believe that you will answer their needs, Lord. Broken relationships, that you will heal it, Lord. Broken relationships between spouses, between children, between siblings, Lord. Lord, restore this relationships, Lord. Being reconciliation, spirit of forgiveness and reconciliation, Lord, let it now flow. Let it now flow in their lives. Thank you, God. We are so careful to give you all the glory and the praise. May now we always look up to you, Jesus, declaring our victory. No matter how long, no matter how hard, we proclaim our victory in Christ Jesus. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God's good.
Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Brother Conrad. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. Come on, you know this. a God that, I mean, we learned it today that God works for the good. And sometimes we get into a place where we feel like we don't deserve it. And sometimes we get into a place where we think we're not doing enough to merit, to deserve that kind of love. And I want to tell you today that that's the wrong way of thinking because God loves us not because of what you've done it's because of who he is it's just in his character to love you and it doesn't matter if you're struggling within yourself to think that there's a lot of people 
who are going through some depression that for whatever reason they can't just think, seem to think that they can't escape this place that there's no other there's no, no force on earth that could take them out but that's the kind of love that God expresses you may think that you're not capable but he is it doesn't matter what you think it matters who he is Amen. There's a song and it goes like this. And I know I don't deserve this kind of love. But somehow, this kind of love is who you are. It's a grace I could never add up. To be somebody you still want. But somehow, you love me as you find me. He loves you where you are. Where you are right now, He loves you. Amen. Man. Hallelujah. Praise God. And to think they just sent me up here to make an announcement. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit works in ways that we cannot understand and express. That's the kind of look. That's the kind of God we serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Now this is going to seem kind of awkward because I have a full band behind me to make an announcement about the coffee that we have in the back. But praise the Lord um, uh, through the generosity and through the uh, you know just the love. Again, the love of. Uh, the different servants of this church, they wanted to make, uh, wanted me to come up here and make an announcement that we have coffee available as soon as you come in, like around 9.30 or what have you. It's ready for you. We want you to come in a little bit earlier so that you can have some coffee, mingle. And uh, it's going to, it's going to unfortunately end like around 10.10 so that uh, you're not busy chit-chatting over there and you're actually here having worship and everything so that's the first thing that they wanted me to say uh the, the other thing is that uh, father's day is coming up and if you thought that the mother's day celebration was was something grand <laughs> don't expect too much for the fathers <laughs> i'm kidding uh i'm kidding I, i'm sure our our uh, our, ser our, our servants are, 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 are really excited in, 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 in planning this. So I want you right now to start inviting the fathers that you want to be here. Because they, 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 they ought to understand that there's a word that's coming from God. Our Father. He wants to speak to our fathers. Do you believe that? I'm excited for that. Being a, being a father myself, I can't wait. I can't wait for that. Hallelujah. And one last thing, and, and since we have a band behind us, a couple of people that we want to honor today who's celebrating birthdays. It's uh, Mama Ruth's birthday today. Hallelujah. God bless you. And also, uh, Sister Linda Francisco, I don't know if you're, ah, camera A is over there. Sister Linda, if you're at home watching with us, we want to wish you a happy birthday. Hallelujah. And lastly, let's praise God. Can we give him a clap offering to end the day? Hallelujah. For all the things that were said, prayed for and shared today. Father God, touch the hearts of our people, Lord God, so that we may be inspired to send the message out. Lord, it doesn't just stay here with us. Lord God, you've called for us or you've given that to us so that we can give it away. And so, Lord God, empower us with your spirit. We thank you again for this opportunity to come, to serve, to praise, to worship you. 
We love you, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Still arises, we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Still arises, we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Sixteen bit. <laughs> <laughs>